Hello, good morning, and welcome to Connecticut, and welcome to another out of spec motoring video. You join me with a Volkswagen ID4 all wheel drive Pro S. This is my dad's car, and we're going on a little bit of an adventure today. It's not going to be a crazy long cross country road trip, but we are going to be starting the day with the Volkswagen ID4 going from here in Connecticut. Actually, we started at JFK Airport in New York. I'll explain in a minute. And then we're going to go up to Massachusetts. We're going to swap cars and come back in a Hyundai Ionic 5. This here is a Volkswagen ID4 all-wheel drive Pro S, as I explained before. It's actually my dad's third ID4, and if you're curious about his ownership experience with these, how he's enjoyed the car, why he's had three of them, it's not because he's had any issues. He just wanted to change trim levels, then the all-wheel drive came out, and then he got that. So he's really played around from the base car to now the Max, except this one is not a gradient, so it has the smaller wheels on it. I believe 19s instead of 20s. Uh, you can check out our sister channel, Out of Spec Reviews, where we're going to do a video on why he's selling his Volkswagen ID4. And since this video will come out after, it's because he's buying a Hyundai Ionic 5. So this is going to be sort of the final trip in this ID4. Uh, this is, a, again, all-wheel drive, 70. Four kilowatt hour, 77 kilowatt hour usable, 82 kilowatt hour gross, if I remember correctly. It's definitely gross, that's for sure. <laughs> we got to clean this thing out a little bit before we trade it in. Has a, just over 7,000 miles on it. He's had it only a few months and he's already road tripped it down to Florida, done a ton, but he's moving to the Hyundai Ionic 5. We'll talk about the pros and cons, why that might be a good choice for him or not. We'll see, but my suggestion to him was, hey, it's a zero risk proposition. Ionic 5s are holding their value really well. May as well dump the ID4. The value's great. You're not really losing anything, especially when you factor in the tax credit and try something new. So that's exactly what he's doing. It's our last day with this particular car. First time I've seen this one. Has a trailer hitch. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, let me uh, explain how the trip is going to go and then we'll hit the road. So it actually worked out really well this trip. We just planned it literally a couple days ago where um, I was like, hey, you're going to get your INEC 5. I'm kind of not doing anything these two days. And my dad was out skiing in, in Utah. I live in Colorado. And I'm like, let's just meet at JFK Airport since he already had the ID4 there. So we took two red eye flights across the country. We landed between 5 and 6.30 this morning. And uh, <laughs> I did not sleep at all. So I'm pretty tired. But we're going to jump in this car. We need to get up to Gary Rome Hyundai somewhere in Massachusetts, just outside of Springfield, Massachusetts, where we're going to be trading this car in and he's going to be collecting his Shooting Star Limited Hyundai Ionic 5. Pretty interesting and rare color combination with the uh, light colored green interior, they call it, but it's really, you know, sort of gray seats with a very gray dashboard. It looks awesome. I think it's a beautiful color combination. Same exact color combination that I reviewed. So what do you say we hop in the ID4 at JFK about 60 miles ago, We'll have my dad charging it up when he landed. I'll jump in the car and then we'll pick up the road trip from here. So I just got off the plane and uh, Kyle's running a little late. So I came over to Electrify America here at JFK. Cell phone lot and I think I lost about nine miles of, of range is indicated on the uh, odometer or the gasometer range I should say what was left. The car sat for about five days. Um, battery's obviously cold and I'm pulling only 32 kilowatts which I guess is typical for what I get with this ID4 when the battery is cold. Um, you can see I was at about a 47% state of charge. So that's that. Now this is a decent installation here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten different chargers. Evolve New York. I'm not quite sure what that is. They don't. They're not branded as Electrify America, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for cop. Just got in the car. Thanks for picking me up. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So how much juice do you have in this thing? Uh, you know how to, this is a big screen because you have the big ID4. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so, how do I work all this again? Vehicle charging. Wait, you want me to show you how this thing works? Yeah, it's been a long time actually since <laughs> I've been in one of these. 63%. So you charge it to 90 every day. Well, there you go. Not always. But I guess we're going on a road trip, so we'll get all the juice. Yeah, plus this car is. Not, well, if someone wants to buy it, it'll be for sale at Gary Rome Hyundai. That's right. We'll Absolutely. explain that in a little bit. Unless unless they choose to just wholesale it, which would be silly because I think they can make a lot of money on this car. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I think we're at about 64% state of charge yep. right now. We are going to have to charge one time uh, between now and when we get up to Holyoke, Mass. Do they have char They probably have chargers at the dealer, right? Oh, yeah, they have DC uh, fast yeah. chargers. They, they put in... They put in some pretty good infrastructure there. Um, from what I understand, they made a big investment. Not all Hyundai dealers do it. And in fact, not all Hyundai dealers are selling the Ionic 5s um, because they don't have... They're a lot more than expected. Well, there are a lot of cars out there. There's a lot of SEs and SELs, but if you try and find a limited, forget it. They're hard to find. Yeah, well, um, we'll talk more about that later yeah, on. Yeah, but anyway... They, are we going to your house first? We are. Okay, cool, because I'd like to Thanks shower. So <laughs> Me too. Me too. Well, why? We just flew in on the red eye. Kyle just flew in from Denver. I just flew in from Salt Lake. And uh, good coordinated landing, though. Yeah. I mean, and and here, you know, beautiful trip. Did some nice skiing. Come back, all relaxed. But this is what you have to come back and to. I got, right. But before I got back into this beautiful, I love how slow I sit in this car. The ergonomics are perfect. But before I got into this car, I get on the air train. And what happens? A fight breaks out. Welcome to New York. And, also, and, welcome to New York. Stopped traffic. Yeah, and, and these two guys landed on me physically. <laughs> like I'm sitting in my, I'm sitting in the seat, and they 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 were wrestling and fun. I I don't even know. So Kyle, please don't. Can we not have a fight today? It's just you and I. I already had my fight for the day, so I'm just like. But it is a nice place to be in this VW right now. Trust me. Yeah, but not where we're driving it. This no. is terrible. Well. This is New York City traffic. I don't know. Yeah, so many better places to sit in traffic with views of mountains. That is that is very much true. I cannot <laughs> disagree with that. This is the Whitestone Bridge. Yeah, but you can't really see anything. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a little fogged up. And now you join us in Connecticut. Here's Bailey. Hey, Paparoo. And uh, hello. <laughs> and here's my dad. Of course, you guys know him. Actually, have you ever done an out-of-spec motoring road trip? Yes, when we moved across the country. Yes. Uh, but you've yeah. done a lot of out-of-spec reviews videos. Yes, a, a few. A few. Yeah. And about your ID4s and other EVs that you've owned. I think you've owned more electric cars over the years than anyone. Mm, I've owned quite a few, yeah. that's for sure. You've got to be pushing 15 of them. No. Yeah, you have to. No way. I think you are. All right, we, we got to count them. We'll count them we up. We got to count them up. But it started all the way back with the I3. Oh, let's well, do you count Priuses as No, Pri's oh, don't count. Pri don't Pri don't count. Right, but I do remember once you traded in a Prius on a Range Rover. Well, <laughs> someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> anyway, the car shenanigans continue. Uh, so we are at what about 44% state of charge cars warmed up because you already DC fast charged it at the airport We've driven it, but we'll see how warmed up it is because we're getting into some OBD data nerdiness today Which will be fun and uh, what's the plan actually get up there? I don't know any of the chargers around here. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to go to the EA app I think we'll find one somewhere between here and Holyoke, Massachusetts. Do you know if the second owner of the ID4 gets three years free charging? They do not. <laughs> Good luck to them. They do not. Okay, but if you want this car, it will be, we think, for sale at this Gary Rome Hyundai store, right? Yes, I think so. Unless he wholesales it, but yeah, that would be cool to see if one of our viewers buys this one. And it's a great car. Yeah. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is non-gradient, and quite honestly, I had one before this with gradient, and I like the 19-inch wheels better. Better range, better ride. This is the one to go for right here. Yeah, and it's a good color. The only problem with this color is at least for this model year, you couldn't spec it with the light gray seats, but yeah, for sure. 2022, you can. I did hear that. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. Moonstone with the light because interior. Because I got to say, I'm not particularly a fan of your brown dashboard here. Well, I, you know, the brown dash, Kyle, it's, it's a, 
it, it has grown on me. It's a classy thing. I'm not sure. Oh, you know, okay, you know, okay. I, I understand why you might not like it, but um, no, I, I, I did not like it at first. And then um, because it was available. Because you had a Pro as your first car, which had the right. cloth manual seats, yeah. no sunroof, which had a gray normal dash. Correct. Then you had a gray seat Pro S gradient. Correct. That white. had a Both normal dash. White, and that was a beautiful, beautiful car. And you've filmed uh, a comparison between those two for out of spec reviews. Those were both, those were both rear wheel drives though. Right. And the thing is when I drove the all wheel drive, it was substantially faster. I made a video about that. Yep. For me, I don't really know about the numbers. It just felt a lot faster. Yeah, and the thing that I like about the all-wheel drive is that it sits up a little bit higher from the standard car. It also has beefier sway bars and springs. So the whole, basically all your um, uh, kinematics on the car, all of your, your hard-coated suspension components that are not adaptive in the US uh, are much beefier for performance, even though you have a higher ride height here. So I find driving these cars pretty hard that they actually respond well to uh, pretty quick driving. They're really fun to toss around a back road. I will say that I will miss this car. I you, really will. Yeah. I, I love the ID4. Um, I'm just I'm just playing around. We're gonna try out the Ionic for a while. They're, you know? they're making more ID4s. They're you making always... more of them, but yeah. this is one of the most comfortable cars I've ever driven. Um, just sit in it ergonomically. I'm six foot five. I fit great. It feels great. Uh, I'll miss it, but it's time. Let's so, go. question Let's go for get you, the car. because we're we're actually huge Tesla fans, both you and I. Yeah. Uh, so, what what do you think about the lack of dog mode in any of these other cars for the little one? I think it's a honestly, dog mode is is amazing. It's uh, it gives you the comfort and peace of mind that you can leave your pup on a hot road trip or a cold road trip uh, in a safe place, and you can monitor the app on Tesla is unmatched. The app on this VW ID4 is unmatched for completely the opposite reason. Because <laughs> it's so bad. Because it's so bad. Um, <laughs> VW so Carnet um, app. No, dog mode is almost worth buying a Tesla for. Forget I actually about the agree. supercharger network. I think dog mode, if you have a dog, I think it's amazing. Um, but in any event, yeah, I'm hoping that we can figure out that utility mode right on the on the. Ionic. Yeah, we're going to play around with that. We got to do some temperature sensor stuff to make sure it's safe to leave a dog in there, of course. But then there's just the matter of communicating that to people walking up to the car. Yeah, it's so nice. You got to make a sign like, you know, it, it, like Tesla puts it up there. Don't worry. This this my dog is safe. It's 70 degrees in the car. Yeah. You got to put a sign on there somewhere in the window so that people don't break into the car. Cause I do feel a little guilty, even if um, with the ID4, when you get out of the car, you can leave climate control on, but you do feel like, wait, if, if I see a dog in a car on a hot day, I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, right? of course. So even if I see a sign, how do I really know that it's cool in there? You know, yep. Tesla's just got it figured out. Tesla's got it figured they, out. They, and they got it figured out with on-route battery preconditioning and route planning, two things, both of which this car and the Ionic 5 don't have. We'll rant about that a little bit more. Yeah. Let's jump on the road. We got to hit a Starbucks along the way. And, Starbucks? Uh, yeah. Wait, you, you like you like Starbucks? I make my own coffee. It's yeah, cheaper. well, that's not... What have I taught you in your life? <laughs> Spend a lot of money on cars. Come on, Bailey. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's go. We are now inside the ID4. We have 41% state of charge. It's 1030 in the morning and we have some data here thanks to a nice OBD little app thing. So uh, car is indicating 41% state of charge. We're at 41.94. Uh, this is according to the BMS that's adjusted, of course. We have about 30 kilowatt hours left in the battery pack. Our battery pack voltage is 350 volts. That's going to be a whole new world with the Ionic. Volts? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to teach me. I don't know. I, I hear it's got 800 volts. But that's, I hear full, that's good. Full charge. I don't know what that means. You'd probably be in the 700s most of the time. All low right. low well, sevens. Can I drive? You can drive. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at this little uh, screen here. You can see we're pulling three kilowatts, four kilowatts out of the battery. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty sweet. 30 kilowatt output. It's half of. Here, rain. I'm, I got it in V mode. Yeah, a regen. <laughs> oh, we're putting energy back in. This is sweet. Uh, so anyway, let's continue. Let's keep an eye on our temperatures. Max charging speed is going to be around 30 degrees Celsius uh, cruising. So we'll see if it will warm up on the way to an Electrify America station, which have we chosen one yet or we're just going? No, we're going to have to just go and uh, we'll put it in, figure it out. That's part of the game. All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. We've stopped at the bank so you can pay for your car. Yeah, I got to get a certified, certified check. <laughs> anyway, can we, uh, can yeah, you show so us? I just got a, a text message from uh, Phil up at the dealership. And all it is, is a picture 
I know what that is. Yeah, it says, what does it say? Something load. Vehicle to load. Vehicle to load. Which doesn't come with the Ionic 5. No. This this part was $611.91. That's crazy. Made in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's so expensive. I don't know either. All right. See you with less money in your account. Guys, you know what's amazing is, um, you know, I, I've played around with these OBD scanners for a while, and, I, I, and I'm going to start introducing and including them more in, in my coverage. I think it'll be a great way for us to get it, even the next level of nerdiness, and I can explain some things to you. But I just downloaded this app on, on my other phone here, and um, th this is the best thing ever. This is straight. I have not made any modifications, I swear. Uh, you know, you can go through and see all the different style of menus that you can put on here so you can do it out. And then the top one, look at this, Bjorn style. How about that? Uh, I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you know of uh, a, an amazing uh, EV journalist and uh, great guy, Bjorn Nyland. He does a, an amazing job of reviewing EVs. Uh, and I love that he has his own menu in this random app that isn't even for electric cars. This is like a combustion OBD scanner app. Uh, it's called, I know you're gonna ask, it's called Car Scanner, it's just a blue, blue app called car scanner and uh yeah bjorn style right there they already got the menus laid out <laughs> it's so cool i love to see little easter eggs like that anyway um i gotta say i you guys know i'm a huge id4 fan i love sitting i have my massaging seat going right now it's absolutely wonderful the cabin is is so great in here and this is just a really solid, well-built car. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've actually compared the ID4 to the Ionic 5 in a video before, and the Ionic 5 won that comparison because for tech nerds, it is cool. You can do vehicle to load. It's got 800 volt uh, technology, which doesn't affect the way the car drives, by the way. It's not magic. It just means it can charge a little bit better, but there's still 400 volt cars that can charge faster. I'm looking at Tesla. They can do 250 kilowatts. So the voltage is not the end all be all. It looks cool and all that stuff. And I think overall, it's sort of the next step up in terms of performance and charging and everything like this. But still, it's not perfect. You know, the Ionic 5, I think its weakest part of this whole situation is no on-route battery preconditioning. My, my colleague Jordan on this channel just took an EV6, same car as an Ionic 5 underneath, on a thousand mile road trip in the middle of winter and was getting like 70 kilowatt charging because the battery was just cold the entire time and they didn't drive it hard enough to warm it up. Um, so we're going to play around with that with Ionic 5 today. We're going to do some charging stops, things like that. We are also, uh, oh, I guess back to the point, the ID4, I think, is a better like around town car. If this is just you're gonna be your commuter, I prefer this personally. I think it's a little more understated. I love the seating position. I like the interior. I love the seats. It's just a nice place to be. The Ionic 5 is if you're just gonna have one electric car, an only car has just more capability outside of the around town stuff. Not to say this is bad. Again, I've driven ID4 across the country. My dad's driven them all around and it's not been an issue. So anyway, love the Bjorn style nerdiness stuff here. I just think that's amazing. And uh, we'll be hitting the road. The weather's not looking good. It's cold and rainy. It's like 42 degrees and misting. Terrible weather, but tomorrow should be nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Are you gonna get anything? I'm thinking about it. Thinking about it. All right. What do you drink again? <laughs> it's complicated. We'll see if our audience can guess in the comments below. But it has to be the full complete order. Should I get the same thing? I don't think you would like it. No. I, I think I'm gonna get some food. Yeah, their food isn't great, I gotta say. No. Starbucks right. needs to up their food game. Right. Chick-fil-A is across the street. Wait, so. wait, we got to do the order. Hold on, this is big. Oh, wait, no, our audience has to <laughs> guess. I have a lot of pressure. I'm cutting, cutting the video out. What's our charging plan on the trip? Okay. I think I can put this in sort of a trip view, maybe? I don't know how this works so much. Well, if well, we don't have it in here. Oh, yeah, we do. Here. So you can oh, there we go. Cool. You can do this. All right, so the issue is it's about 100 and... How many miles is it to our destination we got 97 miles to our destination to gary rome to gary rome hyundai yep. and the holy oak just north of springfield but this whoa baby all right this little <laughs> this little meter down here i want to talk about this meter 
but this little thing tells me I've got 83 miles of range. Projected range. Projected and range. we could go eco mode and get it up to 85. Wow, okay, wow. All right, wow. <laughs> okay, so, so we need to charge, okay? Now, maybe because I'm a cheapskate and maybe because I just know how to charge at EA, I'm looking for an EA station. So, and that's because your car comes with free charging yeah, at this Electrify America. Yeah, car came America. with three years. Well, see, the 20, here's the thing about the ID4s. The 2021s came with three years unlimited charging. The 2022s, they actually now are giving you, I think it's three years, but they're limiting you to 30-minute sessions. And there, there's a problem with 30-minute sessions in this car. Um, what is it? Well, so if you're on a road trip. Like and, we are now. Like we are right now. And you want to try to go from, let's say, I don't know, 10 or 15% up to 90% or 80%, let's just say. that That's going to take you, especially in the cold, way longer than 30 minutes. I will give you a couple of reference points. When I road trip this car down to Florida, I would pull in Kyle style, 2%, 3%. He'd, he'd like, oh, dad, come on, you can do like maybe 1%. And a couple of times I would charge upwards of 90% just because I wanted to kind of see how the charge was. One time I did charge all the way to 100%, 63 minutes. Now, this car, if I really want to go from, let's say, 10 to 80%, it will take a solid 45 minutes. Especially in the cold. Especially in the cold. And can you explain why that happens in the cold? Because a lot of our viewers may not realize. Well, I don't know technically why, but the battery is not able to accept as much current current when when the temperatures are colder. And these cars are yeah. they're computers, right? So they well, say, oh, so it's not on ambient temperature. It's when the battery pack when is the battery cold. pack is cold. and it's typically cold when the ambient temperatures right. are cold. No, and, I'm not right. Okay, unless fair. you drive it hard, which uh, just like a quick aside. We're cruising to this EA station right now, so I'm gonna take it out of eco mode. We're gonna go sport mode and drive it hard because we okay. need the fastest charging. You well, know, well to first get there. of all, to go to that EA station, let me show you what I have to do in this car. I just spilled some coffee. Oh well, we're trading it in today. <laughs> Time to trade <laughs> it in. It's gonna have a nice, nice smell, Gary. Gary okay. Roll. Okay. So, so anyway, um, so what you need to do is, and I love CarPlay. CarPlay is phenomenal. Yeah, but here's the problem with CarPlay when preconditioning comes out. There's no integration in CarPlay to tell the car itself that you're navigating to a DC fast charger to warm up the battery pack. Oh, okay. So when the software comes, you won't be able to use this. Okay, fine. So but what I would have to do then is I would have to go to the EA app in He's CarPlay gonna... and figure out where the next, where I want to charge to. There's a CRV down over there. All right, so yep. anyway, um, I'm gonna to go to New Haven. First of all, can we just talk about this stretch? The Northeastern Corridor, right? You're gonna go from here to Springfield, which is a very common route, Yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah. And so you gotta charge here, otherwise you have no options going up through Hartford. You're not gonna go all the way out of your way over no, here. No, to Manchester. And no. all of the chargers through here, I looked on PlugShare, which is a great app to find DC fast chargers, all have less than like five out of 10 ratings, which means they don't work, they're at car dealers, and they're not meant for off-highway charging. Plus, one of the other things that a lot of people don't, oh, it's a fast charger. Like, I don't, a lot of people don't know the difference between AC and DC fast charger. I'm not going to profess to know, but all I know is that CCS DC fast charging, it's not all the same. Right. This car can currently, on its current software, can accept up to 125 kilowatts DC fast charging. And it will soon be updated to 135. Oh, wow. Well, I've seen 131. Delivered it, to the car, but not added to the battery pack. Uh, because it has to run compressor in their transmission process. Oh, okay. Losses. All right. Yeah. So, but but anyway, but when but when we just check the plug share app, a lot of those DC fast chargers were 50 kilowatt max, and some were 24. Those are like at the Volvo dealers. Yeah. So if you think, oh, let me pull up plug share and pull into a DC fast charger, you better well look at how fast. What's the maximum output? That that, car, that that charger can actually And you know who out. does a good job of this, actually, is a company called Chargeway. If you're new, they rate the power level in one through seven. I think the only downside there is you're not training. Why did they just stop in the middle of the highway? Who? These oh, they're people. doing work. 
It's yeah. 95 in Connecticut. What? Um, yeah, you're not training people to look for kilowatts, which no one, you know, you kind of just need mass adoption on, on one scale, and kilowatts seems to be the easiest. Yeah. Let I, me help you I, with I that. I think that's a good thank you. That's it. You can just put that down. You know, the, uh, thank you. <laughs> the, um, so, so anyway, my point is that. Wait, Cecil Superchargers V3s. <laughs> Remember when this used to have only like two stalls at it? Is yeah. an old version two supercharger? Yeah. Uh, maybe not this particular one, but usually they're like right there no, on the they end. have V3s on the southbound side as well. Amazing. These so, were some of the first V3s in the country. Yeah. Yeah, the, if you have a Tesla, it's just so much easier to road trip. Um, but, you know, so, so you really gotta be careful about where you're gonna charge. So in my book, not only because EA comes free for this car and, and um, Back, back to back to the Volkswagen for a second. In 2022, if you buy uh, a 2022 Volkswagen, you get three years free, but it's 30 minute sessions. Yeah. And so we talked about. Imagine if you pull in and you you, you want to go to the next trip, go to the next station. You're going to be paying more because you have to unplug. We're talking wait. a couple dollars. Yeah, I know. I get that, but you're going to have to unplug and wait an hour if you want it to be free. And then when you plug in again. It'll do, do it free. No one's going to wait an hour. No, you just, you know what's going to happen. You pay the $2. A, you're going to get a 2 or $3 bill. All right. So anyway, back to this. <laughs> that's, less, that's less than this drink right here. Yeah. Well, you paid for it, so yeah. I'm okay with that. All right. So anyway, we're going to go to New Haven. Oh, wait. There's one in Bridgeport. Look at this. Yeah, there's it two just, in It just Bridgeport. popped up. Hold on. Why are we going to Bridgeport? All right. We'll go to New Haven. Yep. And. Well, you uh, can't click on the exact one, can you? Stratford. Wait, there's two? Well, you, we want to go to this one. I've never used the CarPlay EA app before. Well, all right, but are there two there? All right, so let's go there. How do you know which Stratford one it is? Stratford Square. You just know that's the one. Because uh, I wouldn't know that. No, I mean, Stratford. That's not it. That's six miles away. That can't be it. Six miles away from what? I don't know. It's oh, got to be this yeah, one. yeah, you're right. You're right. That seems dumb. Just let me tap on that. Okay. Fair and enough. Now navigate. you can navigate. Okay. And then it pulls up Apple Maps, not Waze. Uh, yes, that's true. And if you have Waze going, it kills your your route, yes, your navigation, because it won't do, like you won't it won't talk to you two times. But what you're saying, Kyle, is once does this car do preconditioning? No. Okay. Will it? Maybe. Okay. The Ionic Five does, does not, not do preconditioning, but I'm hearing it will. It will. They, and, we know it will. And I actually have a call in. 10 minutes with the battery engineers. Sorry, eight minutes with the battery okay, engineers okay. on the Ionic 5. Right, so Sorry, we need to hurry this clip no, up. No, no, that's fine. But but my point is, you're saying that in order for me to do preconditioning, I would now have to swivel chair over to the Ionic 5's navigation system. Yes. And put in the address. Yes. And then it will actually precondition. Yes. Also, okay. there is some more deep level integration with Apple Maps. For example, when you use Apple Maps, it'll actually Starting come up with. here on the Volkswagen screen. Uh, and in some cars, use heads straight. up displays. Right. Oh so yeah. That's kind of nice. You see, if you slide this over, it makes it bigger. Did you know that? Yes. I know you knew that, but I, I kind of like that. Okay. That's, that's nice integration. Yeah. Um, I, I love the displays in this. People hate the software in this car. I love it. I think but, it's good. But, but anyway, so, the question is, why get rid of the ID4? Because I love this car, and I'll give you one little statistic. If this car can charge maximum of 200 and let's say 30 kilowatts, now I know that's a maximum number, but it uh, holds it pretty long. If it holds it pretty long, there's a there's a Mach E over there. Oh yeah, take a look what, at that. What is that? Oh, I like that color actually. Yeah, that's a good color in the Mach E. What is that a base? Like, four, what is that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you inch up a little bit, we can we can do some snooping here. It's a Mach-E 4, so small battery, all-wheel drive. Okay. So they're looking for the next charger. Yeah. I'm <laughs> just joking. Follow, follow me. Well, no, he's getting off here. At, right, and, at Bridgeport. Uh, he's getting off in Bridgeport at the yeah. Barnum, Barnum, you know, P.T. Barnum, the, the circus guy. He was from here. But anyway, I calculated it will save me one way down to the Ionic 5 because of its faster charging, one way to we'll Florida. Save me to Florida, to our condo down on Marco Island. Four hours. Wow. Four hours, one way. Okay. That's well, definitely worth 15 I know, know you got to do this call, but let's let's break that out like the old Jennifer convertible com co con uh, co uh, commercials. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Four hours, round trip, eight hours, three round trips to Florida, 
is one entire day of your life. What's the price difference between this car and the Ionic 5? They're, the, they're about the same. Okay. Five grand more because I'm getting the fancy one. Well, I'll take it five grand to save a day? Yeah. Yeah. Over, that's, that's, over a year? Yeah, that's if you do three round trips. Now, yeah. you're probably doing that a year. Yeah, so that's, that's substantial. Oh, and one last point. Oh, really? One last point. Okay. It's actually a safety issue. Oh, really? Yes. Why? Have you been to some of the Walmarts at 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. charging your car by I, yourself? I have, but legally I would never insinuate that Electrify America is anything less than a stellar charging experience. I have no issues with Electrify America being stellar. Have you seen the type of people that hang out at the Walmart I at have. midnight? It's not Listen, the place you want to be, that's If you certain. can save 15 minutes on a charge, that could be life or death. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it out there. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've seen some shady stuff going down at the Walmart. I, it, like crazy stuff. In so South the, Carolina. buying an Ionic 5 will save your life. That's my theory. <laughs> I guess we wouldn't be able to prove it. No, we can't <laughs> prove it. But I'm t I, no, all kidding aside, just the faster charging, it is um, really, really the key reason why I'm buying the car. So, okay. Thank right. you for that explanation. You're, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Uh, no parking except while charging. Well, good news is it's our first charge. Actually, it's going to be the last charge that I'll ever do with this car. Um, here in New Haven, I'm at 18%. I've been driving since Norwalk, Connecticut, so we're pulling 93 kilowatts right now, which is pretty good. And look at this. we got a Mach-E pulling in right now as well. So we're at 18% state of charge. Uh, we just need a little top off here so that we can make it up to Holyoke. Um, Kyle's on the phone right now on a Zoom call with some secret engineers. Um, <laughs> amazing stuff. Uh, but, you know, look, it, it says, uh, this is good. I just plugged into the EA station. There's, uh, it's an interesting install here. I, I kind of like it. Um, and it's sort of a pull in as opposed to having to stretch the cable and back in, which is, which is a nice install. Um, this one here is a 150 with a Chatamo. The one I pulled into, plugged into was a 350, which I know is not really something you should be doing, especially when you have a car that can't pull more than 125. Uh, but there is another 350 over here that this gentleman is plugging into right now with his beautiful Mach-E all-wheel drive, beautiful car. Um, so anyway, that's it. Uh, we're going to continue on with our road trip. Well, we're juicing up and uh, sorry, I was on a little call there, but you already introduced the chargers to the audience. I did. Okay. Yep. They've never been to an EA station before. What? I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, 93 kilowatts at 42%. Honestly, not terrible considering the temperatures. And uh, you were driving in traffic, so you were not warming the pack up hard at all. No. And so all, all pretty reasonable, I would say. Cable cooling is active. I like these Signet chargers. I just think they look awesome. Um, and honestly, I think they might be the most reliable uh, out of all the installed Electrify America chargers. But of course, that's not... I, I'm just saying that. Also, Dad... Where'd he go? He's going that way. He's running away because I'm going to give him crap for this. Why would he plug into a 350 kilowatt unit? I have no idea. Here's another 350, a Mustang Mach-E charging on it. And then, of course, a 150. What we should have done was plug into this particular station, two CCS plugs, 150 kilowatts, um, so that if a Tycon or a Lucid rolled up, they could take advantage. Or Ionic 5, of course. And you always use this one last in case an old leaf rolls up so they can use the Chatamo. Never use this one first unless all the other ones are broken. So you plugged into the wrong charger. I know, I know I did. <laughs> does this have an automatic tailgate? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and you're pushing it up? I don't know why it didn't go up though. <laughs> all right, well, we'll charge up till whatever and then we'll, they have DC fast chargers at the Hyundai dealer. Yes. And we are at 45% state of charge, 46%. You think we have enough juice? Yeah, we do, we're good. Awesome. So we'll get up there. We'll throw it on the DC charger, set it to 50% or something, because it'll probably sit on the lot for a while. You got to click unlock on the key, don't I know. you? <laughs> yeah, I did before. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Man, CCS is still a little too clunky for what it really should be. I'm telling you, if you if you don't 
exercise just buy an ev and charge it ea these things are heavy yeah but it's not just ea it's every no. charging yeah any any water cooled high current cable is going to be yeah but a tesla like v3 this. those things are thin yeah do you want to um have me drive and you can look at the uh all the data yeah okay i'll drive that'd be good so uh, this is the last 6.2 miles of me driving my id4 and i'm not even driving it i mean oh it's got the wimpiest heart because he drives off the road <laughs> <laughs> so kyle final thoughts on this id4 love it i just love with the massaging seats i can sit down low the problem with the ionic 5 is you kind of are like this and here i can kind of just get nice and low in the car i got the steering wheel it's a wonderful steering wheel um, everything visually is nice i just love the way this car rides i love the suspension calibration all the stuff that normal people probably don't care about i love in this car also little things like i like the hidden features where you can just tap it like this and your heated seat comes on and you know the rear window situation is pretty garbage that's dumb where there's no secondary switches for the rear but overall i think the car is really well thought out i think the volkswagen id line nailed it and i uh, really wish we had the id3 in the u.s i would actually probably go for one of those um, because that's like the ultimate little hatchback electric car and if you haven't we already road tripped an id3 for a month around europe it's on this channel so just go back and find those videos uh, we're only 11 miles away. What do you have to say about your ID4, Dad? Yeah, yeah, so look, I've loved my ID4s. Um, I could see myself buying another one. I could do um, You know, I try, my, my wife, Kathy, she, she she wants to have one gas car and one electric car. That's and I was silly. saying- She commutes in a gas car. I know, day. I know, I know. But I was like, Kathy, why don't we sell the Macan and you dr we'll keep the ID4. We'll probably save $200 a month. I just paid $4 and 49 cents a gallon the other day because I got to put super in that thing, right? Yeah. So I'm filling up $65 to fill that thing up. But in any event, she looked at me with such evil eyes like that is not happening. She loves her Macan. Well, she got she it. She should go for the Macan electric. Well, she may do that. That she might do. But, yeah. you know, look, there are little things about this ID4 that I wish it had. Um, and one of them is is the one pedal driving that I really truly miss from from Tesla. Yeah. Um, you know the Ionic has that. Yeah. Um, I also, you know, I, I owned how many? I guess I had a couple of Konas. We're going and, sideways on the video here. What do you mean? Oh yeah, you were holding it sideways. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was I was videotaping you as I was talking talking. So yeah. um, videotaping. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell you can tell my my age but in any event uh you know i had those konas and i love those pad the, what are the, the dave paddles? kona the dave kona that yeah. was you know <laughs> so instead of the dave connor it was the dave kona yeah you had two electric i had konas. two electric konas and going uh, back to your hyundai roots and and i and i definitely loved those cars um the braking calibration when you would terrible. come to an end like a stop especially if it was slick out that thing was crazy and then the other thing was because it was front wheel drive you would just like i mean it, you would just light up the front tires it was magically his, efficient you would easily get over 300 miles it, on yeah, but that's a lot that's a lot lighter car too isn't it i mean than the ionic 5. Um, yeah smaller lighter smaller lighter you know the ionic 5 is look when i look anyway, at the, about the id4 yeah about the oh, okay about the id4 so i love the ergonomics i love the posture i love the driving it's just i an, like this e i know, you don't like I, know. I i don't love the the, the armrest you know the id buzz the, the bus one that's coming yeah have them on both sides oh okay cool so that's gonna be really cool. that's like an rv right having yeah, you know, just sit in like a lazy boy massager, yeah but uh here we are in springfield mass and it's a model s no oh, look at that is that a new one uh we'll see you here in a second i don't think so Okay, Vermont, Vermont plates. plates. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and here, here on the left-hand side is the Basketball Hall of Fame. Hey, look, a Hyundai dealership. Not where we're going. Not where we're going. But um, yeah. So anyway, but the ID4 has been a terrific car. Uh, you know, I just want to try something new, and I really enjoy the Ionic Five when I test drove it down in Florida and. Um, you know, and uh, I test drove a rear wheel drive one as well. I think that was, was a phenomenal car, but yeah, this is a uh, nice, nice little Tesla right there. Yeah. 
And, um, but in any event, look, I hit the gas. Originally, I was going to get a rear wheel drive SE on the Ionic 5, and I'm going for the Limited. And part of the reason for that is because I've gotten used to things in this ID4. Like, look at this glass roof. Glass roof is one it's just, it's, it's a better glass roof than the Ionic 5's glass roof. But, but the one thing is, when you shut the, shade. when you shut the shade in this car, all right, I'll give it a second. It still lets light in. Yeah, the Ionic, the Ionic 5 is cool the way it closes, like a, like almost like a clamshell. You want to know a fun MEB fact? Yes. In the ID3, the shade comes from the front, so you actually swipe back to close the shade. In the ID4, you swipe forwards to close the shade. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, that's like one of your pet peeves with the downshifting. Do you push the, oh, the, the you know, what do you do? Push forward, push down forward the downshift, and the, like, you know. Back to upshift. But, but, be, but everybody. You want to downshift under braking. It's rally style. But I don't know. Even I, Porsche gets it because on their GT cars, like a GT3 with a PDK, is push forward and downshift. But a standard 911 is not that way. This is from 991 generation. I see. Okay. So. Well, in any event, so um, look, a lot of people complain about the ID4 not having a frunk. Who cares? Who cares? Right? Well, that's just my. I mean, I. I have a frunk in my car. I can't remember the last time I opened it. I'll probably yeah. find some leftovers in there rotting away. Didn't you have? Didn't you have like beer explode in one of those frunks for like a month or two? What, the, 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 there were maggots in the back. The, of the, the car. car was condemned for a while, wasn't it? Really I mean, sales uh, pitch here. Well, I mean, you <laughs> no, we cleaned it. And what did you do with that? You got one of those ionic, ionic. Oh, we like um, ionizer, ionizer, ionic sizer, an ionic sizer. Okay, ID4, good car. Highly recommend you should buy one if you're just looking for a car. It's still the car I highly recommend to most people who just need transportation that have home charging availability. And the real only key usable advantage I think of Ionic 5 over this car for your average consumer is going to be charging times on long trips. Other than that, you just pick which one has the cars in stock at sticker. Stop paying over MSRP for cars. I get some people need to, but just find a car and sticker somewhere. I, I am just against over sticker for cars in my opinion, but do what you got to do to get your car, I guess. And uh, at least for a mass production car and uh, just buy whichever one is closest to you that fits your needs better. I agree. I agree. So bye-bye ID4. Um, we're almost in Massachusetts and no, aren't we in Massachusetts? That was Springfield, Mass. Well, yeah, we're already in Massachusetts. Yes. Yes, we are. Messed up there. Oh, well. That's what happens when you're having fun, Kyle. I love this turn. This is one of the better turns. Can, oh, boy. Scooch around. Somewhere. All right, all right. That's... Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> that was a relatively large number on a... This car handles. This car handles. All right, we'll catch you soon and continue the uh, road trip video with a different car. Bye-bye. Here we are rolling up to Gary Rome Hunt. That's a huge dealership. Whoa. This guy's not messing around. Gary Rome. I think it's one of the largest in the country. Oh, look at all the solar panels back there too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Have you been here before? No, I've never been here. Um, so we talked to Gary actually. Yeah. Oh, there's my car. There it is. There it is on the charger. Wow. Okay. Let's go plug this into a DC fast charger and uh, would you mind going into the energy settings and setting it to 50%? Because it's going to probably sit. Yeah, because it's probably going to sit on the lot for a little while. So sure. vehicle, top right. Oh, yeah, top right. I Charging. Got Charging. Yeah, we'll plug it in here. We'll set it to 50%. Best thing for long term for it. And, uh, yeah, let's juice her up. They have a Nissan Leaf over there. There we are, 50%. Nice. And then we'll just pull it off the charger by the time we're done. You must have hit the hazards. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, with you backing up. Everyone be cautious. I'm not the best reverse driver. Here we go. All right. And they have a digital teal limited over there, looks like. Maybe I'll get that one instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. It's 125 kilowatt shared uh, charge point CPE 250 unit. So that thing i will not miss this thing yeah but it's worse than the ionic 5 it is terrible oh it's way worse than this you're gonna wish you had this thing why, why is it worse how could it be worse it's you're gonna have to rip it off every single time i try to put this in i go like this 
and then I have to flip it around. I don't know why. It's yeah. the way it and hangs. And there is a way that you can like lock it right into this little thing it's here It's just too. the way it hangs and then you grab it and then it never goes in. You have yeah, to go like but, that. But it's meant to go in here. Where? Yeah, there's a little thing, a holder for it. Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. Something like that. <laughs> All right, let's get it charging. All right. I've activated the charger. I don't know if it's free or not, but we'll just get some juice in it. And uh, yeah, so they have two DC fast chargers and a level two here. There's also more level twos down that way. So plenty of charging capability, new Palisade. This is sweet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's see, here we go. It's kicking on, charging, it's thinking about it and it's ramping up. It is uh, paid, but we'll just let it go. It doesn't matter. Get it to 50%. We're rocking 43 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts. What's the most we'll see? Battery should be warm. 70. Hey, Kyle, so that's all it wants. One, one thing that I have this for the radar detector. Yeah. All right, so because the ID4 doesn't have a DC outlet in the front, what I had to do was run this long cable. Hold on. <laughs> so basically, this is where the DC like the uh, 12 volt 12 volt is so i run this long cable uh all the way through these seats <laughs> why okay because you didn't want to hardwire it no i didn't want to hard hardwire it i don't keep cars long enough to hardwire things right <laughs> so so then basically it is a shame that there's no 12 volt plug up front you got to do that so you just had an extension for I had it. An extension card, and then I ran it all the way up through. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than hard wire. <laughs> well, we're gonna shoot a whole collection day video here, so take a look at out of spec reviews for that. We'll let this charge up in the process, and um, yeah, so we're we're about thirty cents a kilowatt hour ish is what it looks like. That's not bad. Standard rate, 71 kilowatts on 125 kilowatt shared, and that's normal. The CPE 250s. Even though they say 125 kilowatt, they're not actually 125. That's a very high voltage rating. And this is a 400 volt pack car. An Ionic 5 though can get, uh, well, I've seen as high as 112 on these, which is pretty spicy. Ooh, walking in. Nice cars. And an Ionic 5. Take a look at that. Here we go. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I haven't seen the Limited with the Shooting Star. And mm -hmm. you know, the thing I, was a little concerned about with the SE and the SEL with the Shooting Star was the black trim and the black around the wheel wells, but I love how this limited trim is offset by the silver accents. I, we're ready to go in and sign. So. All right, you go pay for the thing. And here it comes being backed into their delivery bay. You can see Gary, he's a dog guy, love that. You know, we love dogs here. What do you think? I love it. With your Electrify America, they're offering two years of free Phillips. Um, unlimited times, so you'll have 30 minutes at a time on a level 3 charger or 60 minutes on a level 2 charger, which is plenty of time because this will go from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes on level three. Guys, I, I, this is not a sponsored video at all. I wanna say that they didn't charge my dad markup for the car, which is great, but you know, not a sponsored video. And uh, <laughs> it's what a cool dealership. Your first drive. The heads up display is awesome. How's the on-limit handling dynamics? Uh, well, I, I have a little bit, uh, I'm not really opinionated quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you brought the Ionic 5 over here to your ID4. First drive. First, first drive, drive review, what is it? Four or 500 yards is how far I went. Um, <laughs> I think it's excellent. It's very smooth. Uh, Styling wise, can I just say, even though I love the ID4, in this spec, the Ionic 5 is so much cooler. Cop, look at this. Do you see this right here? It's like, it's like got angry teeth. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know if I like that. I like that. I definitely <laughs> like that. That's oh, cool. I, I think that's cool. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Like I said, oh, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, the guys here at Gary Rome, the team, amazing. Really great experience here. We're out for a cruise. I'm loving this thing. I feel so high up though. You know what? You just got to slouch down a little, Kyle. It's not that hard. <laughs> Uh, Where's the mean, massaging though? seats? Uh, that's going to have to be an add-on, a modification, if you will. <laughs> I don't think uh, so. No, no, you know what? It, it... Are you trying to justify adding aftermarket massagers? Yes. So we're in your Ionic 5 cruising along. We are, absolutely. We've gone about 10 miles so far with a total of 33 on the clock. 
Maybe we've gone more than 10 miles. I think we've gone 20 miles. I think we have gone 20 miles. Anyway, it's been a combination of highway and now we're on the country roads. Yeah, and how are you enjoying it? You I have really, it in sport mode now. I do have it in sport mode uh, because you reached over and put it in sport mode. That's right. Um, no, listen, just a couple things. It feels very refined and very, I don't know if, if maybe you used the term grown up. It feels solid. It feels planted. It's quieter than the ID4. It is, is it, it is quieter than the ID4. And what's interesting is I remember not liking when I sat in the car in the showroom in an SEL, I felt like I sat too high. But one of the benefits now that I'm driving this car is that the what I'm able to see in the road is very similar to the Model Y. I'll flip the camera around and show you. So you can see this is right up here at exactly my eye level. You can see everything down, even the hood. Yeah, and the, and the ID4, the the uh, the fenders in the front are very high, and not that it was bad, but I, I actually prefer that over this. Well, to be you honest. feel like you're sitting inside, whereas here I don't feel like I'm sitting on top, but I feel I, I do. Well, okay, ergonomically, let me just say, left arm, right arm, love it, feels great. The seat, very comfortable. The headrest, I actually think it moves back and forth because I pulled it forward and it's at, I'm 6'5", and I've got plenty of headroom above me. The glass roof is more forward in this car than it is than it was in the ID4. And I actually see the sky without having to move my head back, which I like. It has a very open feeling. I thought that the floor being open in the center as well W w was um, going to be weird, but this thing, since it moves back and forth, it actually feels pretty good to where where it is right there, and it doesn't uh, doesn't annoy me. The screens themselves, impressive. Apple CarPlay, the screen is huge. Um, Android I, Auto only goes this far though. Oh, is and that then, right? And then this is like you have to put a split screen. So I was a little concerned because I know on the ID4 I had the bigger screen, and. Um, on the original one I had, it was a smaller screen, but then I got a bigger screen and it's higher, but this is super wide. The letters are extremely clear. And I love this feature of being able to see when I put my turn signal on a video camera out the back. So I'll tell you what, it feels very good. It feels quick as yeah, well. I mean, when you nail it, this thing, this thing <laughs> goes. Um, you know that queasy feeling that I hate? <laughs> yep. You feel that. This is a man that does not like acceleration. No. I, and and then comments on the acceleration. I've mentioned the, <laughs> the Aerosmith rock and roller coaster. That I, The worst part about that is the launch. And you get that weird feeling. And then I love the ride. You did not get that feeling in the ID4. Even in the all-wheel drive version. This car, you do. Now, here I am doing 45 miles an hour. I punch it. The thing jumps. Wow. I mean, this car it's is good. much faster than the ID4. As a matter of fact, I've seen a couple of reviews recently where they're saying 0 to 60 is under five. Are I you saw... watching reviews other than out of spec reviews? No, I'm doing my research, my due diligence. <laughs> okay, it's important. Someone has to, You're, you, you know, you don't watch them. So. No, I don't. Yeah. No, but I've seen, I think Motor Trend. Um, oh just yeah, because recent... they're the most trustworthy outlet on the planet. Well, whatever. No, I mean, they are, their, their numbers are actually usually great. Okay, I'm just joking. But, but I'm pretty sure I saw a four, seven, four, eight, and, and I, I believe that the car absolutely feels, um, feels solid. So the other thing that's interesting is the graphics here in the center that show you where the energy is going, whether it's to the rear wheels or to the front wheels. And I'm in iPedal right now, which I love. One pedal driving, I miss that. But th this, uh, when I say I missed it, I had it in the, in the Tesla. Um, yeah. I had it in the Kona. Uh, did not have it in the ID4, and I know it's coming. Whatever, it's not here. Actually, now. I don't know if one pedal is coming. No, no, oh. just auto hold. Auto hold. Okay. Well, this has auto held. It has one pedal driving. <laughs> it's got both. It's got both, and to me, that just just changes the whole driving, um, you know, dynamic and, and experience. Do you want to explain where we're heading to? Because we we're not on our direct route back to yeah. the house. So so. I, I actually don't know where we're heading to, yeah. except um, somehow, Kyle, you've you've gotten in touch with a, with a couple of guys that are that are li live here locally in Connecticut. It's funny. I was watching a video yesterday morning. I was in Salt Lake, and I saw this video of a guy that bought a Hyundai. I think he got a an Ionic Five, obviously an SE, and he bought it from Hyundai One Twelve, which I almost bought a car from those guys. 
And I said, hey, this is pretty cool. He's doing a review of the video. Then Kyle called me later in the day and said, Dad, we're going to go over and meet this guy that just bought this SE. And well, so what we're doing is we're comparing the limited to the SE to the SEL. Oh, right. So, so the full so, trim. So we're gonna, and it's going to be someone that you've seen on YouTube. Yeah. And, and so in any event, I, um, I think that'll be interesting to see the differences between the trim levels. But um, the steering wheel also, it's not... It's perfect. I, I love it. It's 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 kind of weird because hit the horn. Try nice. try or at least two. Yep. Um, you know it's it's uh, usually there's what three like a T. You know what the four dot stands for? I do. You know who I learned that from? I watched one of these videos from Out of Spec Something Reviews. Hopefully a podcast. It that might have been a podcast. Falling over. Might have been know. a podcast. Yeah, that's not good. Needs paint. Needs um, paint. Four squares morse code for the letter h because this car does not say the word hyundai on it um although it has the two badges in the front and the rear but wow solid feel loving this loving this car i'm so happy it's better than i thought it would be and i've only driven it now what 27 miles something like that something like that i love it this is a nice little town that we're cruising through yeah is this Vernon, Connecticut? I don't know. Ellington. Really... Ellington. Congregational Church in Ellington. U.S. Post Office, Ellington, Connecticut. I don't think I've ever been here before. Oh, I have not, no. Yep. There's the Star Hardware. There you go. Wait, this isn't Boston. Uh, close enough to Boston. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, nice town. Park the car. Park the Hyundai. You got Smart Pack. Smart Pack? What yeah, is, what... You got the key that can move the car. Oh, do I need that? No. <laughs> I'm never going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait. Do I have 360 degree cameras? I won't let you turn it on while driving, but I think so, yes. Hey, I'm fogging up. Uh, I mean, that's, not me, but... Yeah, well, your why? memory is sometimes. So that's true. Uh, How do I not fog up? Climate, AC on. There you go. You Auto look? dehumidify did not work. Right well... we, we got to return the car. Yeah, send it back. That's... <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Where's my car, where's my auto CarPlay or whatever it is? There we go. Okay, good. Yeah. Look, and I'm all. It's all fogged up. Yeah, I don't know I why. Can't, I can't see anything. What changed? I don't know. I really don't know. That makes no sense. Wow, they got to work on that. Like, you can't see to drive. The Even car. this fogged up. How's that possible? What is going on here? We must have driven. I wonder if this will heat your mirrors. I need more juice. Okay, I'm in eco mode. I do not like that. I don't think you are in eco mode. I think I am. No? I put it... Yeah, I am. Well, it was using front axle there. Well, I gave it some juice. No, it'll, it should stay in rear wheel drive. Are you sure you're in eco? Yeah, I'm in eco. Well, it used the front axle. Interesting. So maybe it will use the front axle. Because I'm in level, certain... level three No, nope, doesn't region. matter. Doesn't matter. Right, well, watch. Here. Yeah. Definitely using front. Absolutely. Eco mode level three. Yeah, now it's shut off. Are you wide open throttle? I was there. Go wide open throttle now. There, it, it kicks in. the front. Yeah, it kicks in. I, I, can you confirm you're in eco mode? Uh, I'm oh, in it eco says mode. eco mode. Yeah. I, what, you How does I would, that make any you sense? You think I would tell you that yeah, I'm in eco mode and I'm not? Well, Hyundai claims it doesn't run, it runs rear wheel drive. Well, I, got, I got the latest software. It's possible. That's right. I don't know. What version? we got to figure that out. we got a lot. I don't know if you can see the drive. How, how do I do the upgrade to the latest version? You, you can't do that over the air yet? I think you have to software update it with a USB stick and then over the air. I don't know. Wait, what year is this? Yeah, I know. We've been doing this since 2013 in Tesla's remotely. Ten years. Okay. And so, they're still talking USBs here. So, are we do, so this car does or does not have OTA? I don't believe in its current form that it does. Do you know where we're going? No, but this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right but at I all. But I think we're just cutting over to another town. Continue straight. I don't know. Well, we're getting a nice view of Connecticut we neighborhoods. We need to give this uh, person a name in the Apple CarPlay. No, this is uh, oh, this your is... Google Maps, which you don't use. Why am I using it? I don't know. All right, we'll see you over <laughs> at the parking garage. <laughs> yeah, this is a really cool town. Yeah, look at these houses. They're... I feel like I'm in Breckenridge. Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, you know how they always have those multicolor pretty yeah pretty i guess town. i guess i could see it you could see it right hmm. so it's a parking garage and we're going to go to the fourth floor so i don't so know if it's the Kyle. left or the you right you know these guys who are we meeting <laughs> yeah all right is this it it's somewhere around here right here yeah i guess this is it courthouse parking garage full go to the top
All right, let's go. In we go. <laughs> Welcome to the mystery of product planning and packaging and chip shortages. You actually got more than what you bargained for here. Right. <laughs> Except for the, uh, the, the window buttons. I only have uh, That's right. automatic buttons on the uh, driver's side. On the driver's side, express up and down. The rest are only expresses down, but not up. Penny pinching. <laughs> well, after filming with the three trims of Ionic 5, we are now on the highway in rain, soaking wet because we filmed outside. It was just nasty. Oh, boy. And so how many miles is it home? We could probably make it home on one charge, don't you think? <laughs> well, what? Define home. I mean, to not your Fort house, Collins, Colorado. Yes, absolutely. It's about uh, 85 miles. This isn't we're... much of a road trip then, is it? Not really, <laughs> no. I mean... Uh, well, no, but we've already come from Holyoke down. Uh, yeah, but we see. still have 79%. That's All like right, a trip to the grocery store. Hold on one store. second. I'm going to go to Apple CarPlay, and it's 83 miles. Home. So no home. problem. No, I've got... It says, so let's head home, and then we'll uh, update everyone with how the car is doing. It's driving great in the rain. It feels solid. Yeah, just... Um, yeah, you got fresh tires, of course, which is yeah, nice. That's true. And we've made it home. You now have 131 miles on your car. We're at 43% state of charge. Not too efficient, but not too bad. 2.9 miles well, per kilowatt pouring hour. pouring rain the whole time, plus major wind too. Um, yeah, lots of wind, bad weather. Granted, the speeds were low. Yep. Um, but it's still not the most efficient thing on the planet. No, no, no. Uh, and I don't think it's any secret as to how this performs from an efficiency standpoint. Yeah. But not once in major puddles and a lot of runoff passing trucks or trucks passing me did it feel unstable yeah well that's down to your tires well there you go tires wait tires wait yep well cool you had a road trip in your ionic 5 we'll catch up with you tomorrow we'll put some final thoughts in the video and All right. and uh, that'll be that that sounds good. And you join me now back in beautiful Colorado where uh, we have finished that road trip, of course. And what I thought would be kind of an interesting ending is to direct you over to our out of spec reviews channel if you haven't already fallen asleep. Uh, because uh, if you're trying to go to sleep, I got the perfect video for you. My dad put up an hour long sort of uh, thoughts after 10 days of ownership was on his Ionic 5. It's on the sister channel to this one, Out of Spec Reviews, and that's where you can get all of his impressions about the car. By the way, the videos uh, of us taking delivery, that's a whole separate video on that channel. Same with the trim comparison, but this was sort of our journey. So, with some loud combustion vehicles going by, we'll end the video. Thanks so much for watching. Plenty more EV road trips to come and exciting vehicles here on this channel, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.